participate in that webinar or would like to view the important information on enrollment, you can view the webinar at warren.ec. Welcome to the Deep Dive webinar on transfer students fall enrollment. My name is Amado and I'm the Senior Academic Counselor at Warren College. My name is Chelsea and I'm also a Warren Academic Counselor. We'd also like to recognize Isabella Mon, another academic counselor who assisted in putting together this presentation but who could not join us today. This webinar will be recorded and added to our website for you to refer back to. At the end of the session, we will have time for questions. Let's get started. This webinar is part of a two session series. The first session was called Gearing Up for Enrollment and was held on July 22nd. If you had not participated in that webinar or would like to view the important information on enrollment, you can view the webinar at warren.ucsd.edu in the instructional videos section. Today we'll be covering the following. Enrollment timeline, WebBridge tutorial, planning for your first quarter, going over our general education requirements and university requirements, a tour of the degree audit, some helpful resources, and looking ahead. So currently on WebBridge, you're able to view your assigned enrollment time. If you have not viewed your enrollment time, please do so at the end of this webinar. At this time, you can post questions directly to the Warren Academic Counselors and academic department advisors by clicking on the Ask a Question tab on the new Triton Advising portal located in the Virtual Advising Center or the WAC. August 10th to 16th is the enrollment period for transfer students. During this time, you'll be able to enroll in all of your classes on WebRedge. In September, the WebRedge system closes temporarily to allow our academic departments to make any necessary class size adjustments. After this downtime, enrollment will reopen to all students and you will have an opportunity to add additional classes. And this period usually uh, lasts up through the first few weeks of fall quarter. For more information about the enrollment timeline, visit warren.ucsd.edu, go to programs and events, orientation, transfer students, and new transfer timeline. So, as we just mentioned, enrollment appointment times are now posted on WebRidge. To check your enrollment time, you will need to log in to tritonlink.ucsd.edu. Once you're there, hover over Classes and Enrollment, then select WebRidge. From there, you'll be directed to the WebRidge platform where you will be able to click on Fall Quarter 2020. When you click Go, you'll be taken to the course enrollment site for Fall 2020. On the top, you'll see the words appointment times, where you can click to see what time you will begin your enrollment. You'll only be able to enroll in your classes between the times listed. Do not miss your appointment time as classes will fill up. If you miss your appointment time, you will have to wait until course enrollment opens up again for all students in September. As a reminder from our previous webinar on enrollment, you have the opportunity to watch the WebRidge tutorial to gain a more in-depth explanation about how to navigate WebRidge. You can view the tutorial by following this link. For fall 2020, there are three course types that will be offered, in-person, remote, and hybrid. These course types are subject, subject to change, however, since there is a possibility that all courses will need to go remote depending on COVID-19 developments. In-person courses will be delivered on campus with both students and instructors physically present in the classroom, but all materials must also be provided asynchronously. For example, on-campus lectures may be recorded and posted on Canvas along with all other assignments and course materials. Remote courses are taught online with instruction and all course materials provided remotely and asynchronously. Courses will use software such as Canvas and Zoom to deliver content. Lastly, hybrid courses will have both in-person on-campus and remote components. 
and all course materials will be provided remotely for students to access at any time. Please refer to the following Triton Link back page for further information. As for your first quarter, when you are creating your course schedule, plan to enroll in 12 to 16 units, which is usually three to four classes. A sample schedule, such as this one in the upper right hand corner, might be one writing 100, one GE course, and one or two courses for your major. 12 units is considered full time, and all students are expected to be enrolled in at least 12 units each quarter, unless they've applied for and were approved for part time status. You can access the part time online application on Triton. Although students only need 12 units to be considered full time, many students will take 16 units to comfortably meet their graduation requirements within the two years. It may also be a good idea to enroll in 16 units so that you have the option to drop one class and still be enrolled in 12 units. Students must drop courses by Friday, week four, to avoid a W appearing on their transcript, or by Friday of week six to have the W on their transcript. So speaking of general education requirements, to read more information about the transfer GE requirements, go to Warren College website, cover over academics, then general education requirements. On the bottom half of the GE requirements page, you'll find more information on the different transfer types and therefore you can review what applies to you. Let's go over each one of them. To help understand Warren College transfer GEs, we have created a chart that that breaks down the different transfer types. But let's take a look. What is your transfer GE program? Is it IGETSI, partial IGETSI, or UC reciprocity? IGETSI is an optional set of, breadth, uh, set of breadth courses California Community College students can take to reduce their GEs after transferring to a UC or CSU. Partial IGETSI is the same as IGETSI, but a student was short one to two courses from completing IGETSI. An official certification must be received by UCSD admissions in order for the information to be posted on your academic record. UC reciprocity is for students who completed lower division GEs at another UC campus before transferring to UCSD. To obtain UC reciprocity, students must submit an official letter from their previous campus certifying that they have completed their lower division breath or GE at their home campus. Um, so students who have completed IGETC, partial IGETC, or UC reciprocity and whose verification has been received by UCSD are required to complete Warren Writing 100 and two upper division non-contiguous courses. If the student completed partial IGETC, they are also required to complete any outstanding IGETC requirements. We call this set of requirements the transfer for GEs. Now, if you didn't complete IGETC, partial IGETC, or UC reciprocity, you'll complete standard GEs. The standard GE requirements are still one writing 100, which is required for all of our transfer students. In addition to ethics and society courses, two formal skills, and either two programs of concentration or two area study. It is common for transfer students in engineering to have standard GEs because they prioritize taking lower division major requirements for the breadth courses before transferring. Now, what if a student is from an out-of-state college or a non-UC university, or they're totally unsure what the transfer GE programs are? They should contact Warren College Advising to discuss a transfer GE exception petition, which is a form where we evaluate the general education courses they've already taken. If a transfer GE exception petition is approved, then they'll be allowed to complete the transfer for GE requirements. If a Students transfer GE exception is disapproved, they are required to complete the standard GE requirements. In the fall, students should contact advising to check that we received their verification documents. Now, we know that the visual we just reviewed can be overwhelming for some. So therefore, let's take a look at the requirements again in a different form. So remember, if you're transferring into UC San Diego with an IGETC certification, UC reciprocity, or you have a transfer GE exception petition approved, you'll be required to complete the following GE requirements. 
four in writing 100, which must be taken for a letter grade. Two upper division non-contiguous courses, numbered 100 through 199, with the exception of 195, from a discipline non-contiguous, also meaning non-related to your major. A GEPSI certification must be submitted and received by UCSD admissions, as well as posted on your academic record. And UC reciprocity letters must be sent to Warren College Academic Advising. If you entered UCSD as partial IGETSI, or if your previous uh, UC writes you a partial reciprocity letter, the requirements are as follows. We'll complete the Warren Writing 100, which must be taken for a letter grade. Two upper division non-contiguous courses numbered 100 through 199, with the exception of those 195s. From a discipline non-contiguous, again, meaning non-related to your major. And the additional one to two courses for your partial IGETSI or partial reciprocity. Areas that are missing will be noted on the academic history once the partial I get seat is posted. It is important to note that not all UCs grant partial UC reciprocity letters. If your UC cannot write you a partial reciprocity letter, we advise you to check in with our office during the fall quarter to discuss your GE requirements. Now, students without a transfer agreement or transfer GE exception must complete four GE requirements that our freshmen typically follow. Warren Writing 100, which again must be taken for a letter grade. And for all of our students, whether you came in with a transfer agreement or not, we recommend that you complete this course as soon as you can. Um, some of you will be able to take this class in the fall quarter. However, some of you will need to plan to take it either in winter or spring. Uh, you will need to take two Ethics and Society courses. Um, you'll first complete either Philosophy or Poly 27 then philosophy or poly 28. You'll have two formal skills courses. Uh, many of you will be able to overlap formal skills with your major requirements. Um, other students may have transfer credit that already fulfill these requirements. For those who have to take programs of concentration, uh, programs of concentration are required for all majors with the exception for our students pursuing a BS within the Jacob School of Engineering. You must complete two PFCs. Each PFC contains six courses three of which must be upper division. One program of concentration must be from each discipline that is non-contiguous, again, non-related to your major discipline. Students who are completing a BS within the Jacobs School of Engineering must complete area studies. So each area study contains three courses, of which two must be upper division. One area study must be from the humanities and fine arts, and one area study must be from the social sciences. For students with IGETC, partial IGETC, and UC reciprocity agreement, or a transfer GE exception, you can figure out what to take for your GE requirements using the tables on the choosing non-contiguous page of the, uh, the Warren College website. So for students with the standard GE requirements, we will use the same chart to determine which program of concentration or area studies you may choose, but don't tune out just yet. Let's do an example together. Say I'm a biology major, I would find biology within the discipline of natural science, math, and engineering. Remember this when we go on to step two. You'll also notice that some majors, namely cognitive science, public health, and critical gender studies appear in multiple columns and say, see counselor. This means you have a choice of how you want to categorize your major. The way you categorize your major does not change anything about the major itself. It only changes which categories or non contiguous requirements will be from. Once you know what discipline your major falls under, you can identify departments from which to take upper division non-contiguous courses. So if you're pursuing a biology major under the natural science discipline, you'll choose the two GE courses in disciplines other than the math, natural science. So for example, let's say history appeals to you. You can choose two upper division courses from history as it falls under the humanities and fine arts discipline. Or if you have varied interests, you could take uh, one course from history and one course from anthropology. You do not have to choose both of your upper division non contiguous courses from the same department or discipline. Always check the UCSD online course catalog for course descriptions and make sure to choose classes without prerequisites or classes in which you have already with the prerequisites. Check in with our office beforehand if you want to take a critical gender studies, cognitive science, or public health course for your upper division non contiguous requirements. 
And another way to learn more about UGD requirements is to go watch some of the instructional videos we have. So on the Warren College website, you would go to, uh, you would click on academics, then you would click on academic resources. When you are there, open the instructional videos tab where you will find videos on topics such as transfer GDs and more. For GEs, the following university requirements must be completed by every UCSD student. You don't need to worry about many of these requirements right now, and you can also find them listed on our website under University Requirements. First, we have the ELWR, or the Entry Level Writing Requirement. As a transfer student, most of you have already satisfied this requirement before beginning at UCSD. AHI stands for the American History and Institution Requirement. After week four, take a look at your academic history on Triton Link and your audit to see if your AHI has been completed. If not, check the UCSD online course catalog for the different ways to satisfy this requirement. Lastly, there's the, D, the DEI, or the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Requirement. A link to the list of approved DEI courses can be found on our website in the University Requirements section. So additionally, each student must complete 35 of their final 45 units in residence at UCSD. A maximum of 25% of your UCSD courses can be taken on a pass-no-pass -pass basis. Before you confirm your class, you should always make sure that you are enrolled in the class with the appropriate grading option, since most courses must be taken for a letter grade. The deadline to change your grading option is Friday of week four. This is also the deadline to withdraw from classes without a W. To meet minimum progress, you are required to successfully complete 36 units each academic quarter, each academic year. Every student must attain a minimum of 180 units for graduation, with 60 of those units being upper division credit. As undergraduate UCSD transfer students enrolling later than fall 2019, you are allowed to enroll for six quarters to complete all requirements for a Bachelor's of Arts, BA, or Bachelor's of Science, BS degree. If you reach this quarter limit and need additional time to complete those requirements, submission of a completion plan with college approval is required before enrollment can be allowed for additional quarters to continue working towards degree requirements. And finally, a cumulative GPA of 2.0 is required for graduation. Academic departments might have different GPA requirements for the major and minor, uh, which you can find on their website. To access your degree audit, start on Trayton Link. Go to the Advising and Grades tab and then select Degree Audit. The degree audit tool will compare your academic history to the requirements for your major, minor, if applicable, and general education requirements for the college. While the degree audit loads, it sorts your courses into the right requirements, so after adding a fall course, go ahead and run an audit to make sure it counts for the requirement you expect it to. Click View Audit to view your degree audit. When you open your degree audit, it will look something like this. We're not going to go over all of the text on the degree audit now. You should read over your degree audit later and ask an advisor if you have any questions. At the top of the audit, you'll see the student's UC GPA. Your UC GPA is likely zero right now since most incoming transfer students do not have any coursework from the UC system. Below that, you'll see the student's earned plus work in progress units. This is the units they have already passed as well as the units they're currently enrolled in. If we continue to scroll down, we'll see the students' major requirements. First, their lower division requirements, and later, their upper division requirements. Each requirement is broken down into several sub-requirements. Each sub-requirement has a completion status, noted with one of these icons. Each icon indicates the completion status of the sub-requirement or the requirement. Green icons indicate that a requirement is already completed. Blue icons indicate that a requirement will be completed with the work-in-progress courses. Red icons indicate that the student still needs to take further courses to complete this requirement. Transfer courses are always noted with a T in front of the letter grade. Any completed UCSD courses are noted with the letter grade, and any work in progress courses are listed with WAP. 
Please note that any classes that you have planned or that you have waitlisted will not show up on the audit. Only classes that you are actually enrolled in will show up as WIP on the degree audit. You'll also notice that any requirements that are incomplete will specify how many more courses a student needs to take to complete this requirement. And it will also show what course needs to be taken in order to fulfill the requirement. This feature is useful when planning your fall schedule. For example, this student could see that they need to enroll in Chem 43A to complete the organic chemistry laboratory requirement. If you continue to scroll down, you get to the student's upper division major requirements, which look a lot like the lower division major requirements. If you have any questions about your upper or lower division major requirements, contact your major advisors. This student has already passed two courses for a letter grade for their major, as well as one class for a pass me pass grading option. Usually, you need to take classes for your major for a letter grade option. In spring 2020 only, there was a special exception due to COVID-19, which is why this student has a pass me pass grade in their major. You should plan to take all your major classes for a letter grading option as this exception has expired. So you'll also see that the students' UC graded units taken for their upper division major requirements are tallied right here. And then their upper division major GPA is calculated up here as well. All students need at least a 2.0 major GPA as well as a 2.0 GPA overall in order to graduate. Continuing to scroll further, we see the students' more in general education requirements. Currently, this student's degree audit shows both of the transfer GE options. It shows the GE options for students that have completed get C, partial I get C, or UC reciprocity, as well as the general education requirements for students that have not completed I get C, partial I get C, or UC reciprocity. This is because UCSD has either not received or not processed the student's I get C certification, or perhaps the student did not complete I get C. If you know that you completed I get C, partial I get C, or UC reciprocity, and your audit still shows the or GE option by the end of fall quarter, contact Warren Advising. If you already know that you did not complete I get C, partial I get C, or UC reciprocity, you can also contact Warren Advising and we'll change your degree audit so it only shows this set of GEs and it's simpler to look at. If you know that you'll be completing the standard GE requirements of Warren Writing 100, Ethics and Society, Formal Skills, and either two programs of concentration or two area studies, the degree audit system is not smart enough to know which area studies or programs of concentration you will be pursuing based on your past coursework. It's your responsibility to contact Warren Advising to declare your PFC choices. After you declare your PFC choices, your audit will be updated and look something like this. For example, if this student declared a Perspectives of Social Science PFC, you'll see that they have three lower division transfer courses that count for that requirement, and they've already passed one upper division course to count for that requirement as well. You'll also see that in their history PFC, they've taken one lower division class before transferring to UCSD, but they still need to take five more courses for this requirement. On the other hand, if we had received the student's partial legacy certification, their degree audit would have their Warren Writing 100 and then two upper division non-contiguous requirements listed automatically. However, if you completed partial IGETC, any additional GEs that you need to take to complete IGETC will not be listed on the audit unless you contact Warren Advising. So, contact Warren Advising if you completed partial IGETC so we can make sure that your audit displays the correct requirements. If you scroll past the GEs on any degree audit, you'll see the student's work in progress. You'll see the student's one spring course that still doesn't have a grade recorded and our students were not recorded. You'll also see their summer and fall 2020 work in progress courses. Continuing to scroll down, you'll also see this repeat, duplicate, or D section of the audit. Contact an advisor if any courses are listed in this section of your degree audit. The degree and diploma application requirement of the audit will not show up until you're a senior. Below that, you'll see the student's university requirements of entry-level rating, American History Institutions, and DEI. Almost all transfer students meet the entry-level writing requirement as a condition for transfer admission. Contact Warren Advising if this requirement still has a red X. The American History and Institutions requirement is also completed for transfer credit for most students. However, this requirement will not show up as completed until midway through fall quarter. The Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, or DEI requirement, on the other hand, almost always needs to be completed with UCSD courses. In order to find courses that you can use for the DEI requirement, simply copy and paste the link listed on the audit into a new tab. Here, you will find a list of all of the approved DEI courses. You will notice that there's 10 pages of results, so it makes it easy to overlap the DEI requirement with requirements in your major or in your general education. 
Below that, you'll see the student's pass no pass tally. Students are only allowed to take a maximum of 25% of their total units for a pass no pass grading option. The degree audit continuously calculates your progress toward that threshold. At the very bottom of the audit, you'll see the student's elective courses. Electives are courses that a student has taken that do not directly count toward their major, minor, or GE requirements, but they do count toward the 180 units needed for graduation. If you complete an IGETC, the degree audit will not show all of the individual IGETC requirements, and most of your IGETC courses will appear down here. If you see a course that's in the elective section of your degree audit and you believe it should be counted toward your major or your GEs, contact an advisor. For example, this student might want to ask their major advisor about using Chem 40A for their major requirements, since their audit shows that Chem 40A is still an outstanding course. If you ever have questions about your degree audit, don't hesitate to contact advisors in either your major or the college, depending on the requirement you have questions about. The best way to reach us is in the Virtual Advising Center. We offer academic plans at plans.ucsd.edu, which is a great resource for you to use as a guide in creating your course schedule. Some majors have two-year plans, and if there is a two-year plan, it will be with the understanding that students have completed a GETC, UC Reciprocity, or an approved GE transfer program. If you have additional prerequisites or GEs to take, make sure to plan for those as well. Here's a sample schedule for economics. You will notice that there are two specific major courses listed for the first quarter, Econ 120A and Econ 100A. You can also look up your major requirements using your degree audit, which we just showed you, or reviewing your department's website, or contacting your major advisor by asking questions through the new Threaten Advising portal. On the top right-hand side of each box, there are the projected number of units for each quarter in order to graduate within two years. For example, this student is starting with 16 units for their fall quarter. The number of units that you should take may vary depending on the units you have earned from outside work. If your major does not have a two-year plan posted, you may adopt the four-year plan to your own situation by adjusting the number of GEs and major courses. So, course and professor evaluation, also known as CAPE, is the student-run organization that obtains student feedback on courses and professors. This is a nice feature because it helps you understand how many hours a week you might spend um, studying for a class or strategize about which professors to take. It also allows you to see how other students have rated courses each quarter. So if you'd like to use this tool, you would just go to cape.ucsd.edu. As you prepare to enroll in classes next Monday, please keep the following information in mind. Remember, there is a web bridge tutorial we highly recommend you watch, which can help you with how to uh, use the enrollment tools. If you plan your courses using the calendar option, you'll need to make sure you click on the enroll button once your enrollment time begins. You can enroll in up to 19.5 units, which includes waitlisted courses. On the first day of classes, you'll be able to enroll in up to 22 units. As you choose your grading options, please make sure you choose the appropriate option. Most major courses must be taken for a letter grade as well as one writing 100. Monitor your pass no pass percentage and make sure it remains below 25% during your time at UCSD. And lastly, UCSD deadlines are strictly enforced, therefore please make sure you keep track of add, drop, and change of grading option deadlines. The deadline to change your grading option and to drop a course without a W is Friday of week four of every quarter. In addition to the deadline to drop the course with a W, is Friday of week six of the quarter. Now for looking ahead. Assigned enrollment times are currently available for you to view in WebRich, so please check those if you have not done so already. On August 10th, which is just a few days away, enrollment will begin and last until August 16th. Please feel free to send us your advising-related questions through the Ask a Question tool in the Virtual Advising Center back, and continue to check your UCSD email for updates. At this time, we will begin our question and answer portion. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit them now. Remember to ask only general questions that are not specific to your academic background. You'll be able to submit specific questions to the new Triton Advising Portal 
located in the back after this webinar. That's all the time that we have. A recording of this webinar will be available for you to view on our website shortly. Thank you so much for watching. All right, folks. So um, thank you for joining us for our um, presentation. Um, now we will go ahead and begin the Q&A section of the presentation. Um, it is 9.18 at the moment. Um, we're going to try and go till about 9.45 uh, to kind of give you all the, the full hour um, of the presentation and the Q&A. We've seen a lot of questions start coming in already. So feel free to start submitting those questions um, as, you, as you watch kind of through the presentation. We can definitely uh, cover some of the information again. Um, but we do ask that you please um, refrain from asking um, very specific or like personal questions through the Q&A section. If you have those types of questions, as we mentioned, go ahead and submit those through the uh, virtual advising center um, in the ask a question section because at that point we can check all your records and then um, and then kind of get to you more specifically in terms of your specific questions. So um, we also have um, so as you uh, heard through our presentation, again, my name is Amado, and then you heard uh, Chelsea as well. And then we also have um, Kim who joining us today, um, who's gonna be helping us answer some of these questions via the Q&A um, chat. So Chelsea and I will work through answering some of those questions live. And then depending on the amount of questions that we have, um, Kim will also help us answer some of those questions via the chat. So you either may hear your answer through one of those two means, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and let Chelsea take over and go through the first question. All right, so we received a question asking um, if incoming transfer students will be able to make an appointment with the counselor before your enrollment time. Um, so unfortunately, we are not offering advising appointments until fall 2020 quarter. Um, and as incoming students, you will not gain access to our Zoom walk-ins, which are virtual walk-ins. Um, until August 17th. However, right now you already have access to the Ask a Question tab in the Virtual Advising Center. Um, so please do ask us your questions there. I'll go through the next question um, that was answered on, that was asked on here. So the next question was, what is a, so students saw in their degree audit that there's a, a capital T and then the letter grade next to the course um, or next to the grade that they receive for the course. And so they're wondering what that means in their, in their degree audit. Um, so that's a great question. So what you'll notice is, so what that means is it's uh, a, um, anytime a student transfers their coursework over, um, there'll either be a small T or a capital T next to the letter grade. And that's just to signify that it's a transfer course um, and that the grade received was done um, somewhere else. Uh, our UC, so your GPA at UC San Diego is just a UC GPA, um, as we mentioned on the degree audit section um, that Isabel helped us put together for you all in that video that we watched. And so um, it, it's just to signify and it's to let the degree audit know not to pick up that grade in the GPA essentially as well. Um, so it's just to help us know that it wasn't taken at UC San Diego, it was done somewhere else, and that it cannot be factored into the UC GPA. As again, it's just a UC GPA only course is taken at UC San Diego or at another UC. That's where you'll notice that. So one of y'all did ask a question if all transfer students need to have P of C's, um, and no, they do not. If you have the IGETC, UC Reciprocity, or a verified transfer program, then you'll only need to take two courses for unit upper division courses, non-contiguous. Um, but you may need to take the P of C's if you have not fulfilled one of those programs. Um, so if you have not, please do contact us through the back right now and see um, what you would need to take. So the next question I'm going to go ahead and answer is how do we change our major and if intending on changing major what classes should we take? Um, so how do you change your major? You have to be enrolled in classes first to officially be able to change your major. Um, you'll use the uh, you'll use Triton link and here let me see if I can share my screen with you. Um, so you'll go to tritonlink dot ucsd.edu once uh, you've already enrolled in classes and typically this happens at the beginning of fall quarter um, uh, and you'll go to Triton Link Tools um, and then under 
uh, the advising tools, you'll see major and minor. So this is where you can manage your major and minor declaration. So anytime you want to change your major, that's where you'll go ahead and go do that. Um, you can only do that for majors that are not considered capped. So if you um, want to change to a capped major, there's that's separate. There's a separate list of courses that you have to fulfill. For transfer students, that tends to be a little bit more difficult. Not all majors accept transfer students. Um, I don't know what those are off the top of my head, but just to double check to make sure if your major, whether or not your major is capped or not, here on the same Triton Link tool, um, you can check all UCSD sites over here, typed capped majors. It'll generate a list of those that are capped at UCSD. Um, and you can see here, these are the list of capped majors. So if the major you're interested in changing to is not listed here, you can use that major minor tool to go ahead and make that change. Uh, so for the next question, a student asked if you can, um, if we could further explain the senior residency requirement. Um, so for that requirement, you are, um, you must take 35 of your final 45 units here at UCSD. Uh, depending on your circumstances, you may want to petition that and you can do that with the senior residency requirement waiver. Um, if that does pertain to you, we definitely recommend that you come um, to Warren Advising and speak with one of our counselors about that. And I'll, I like to add to that, that, you know, that, that um, senior residency, most students are actually uh, okay with that requirement. Typically students who don't meet the requirement and who need to petition are those who um, studied abroad during their final year. Um, and, or again, uh, if you took, uh, most of you as transfer students won't necessarily go back to the community college, but if you do go back and you took an extensive amount of coursework again and, um, and transfer those units over, sometimes that's where the students run that danger of not being uh, in compliance with it, but as Chelsea mentioned, you just go ahead and petition. You can talk to us first and you can petition to have that requirement waived. Um, in next question I'll address is, um, so it says we are restricted to enrolling in a maximum of 11.5 units during the first pass, correct? And thank you for it. Um, all right, so, uh, so this is a great question that um, I'll try and address as best as I can for the moment. So, uh, and hopefully this doesn't confuse you uh, for, the, for right now. So for fall quarter, there is no first pass, no second pass. You probably, most of you probably haven't heard of this, so don't worry about that um, for fall quarter. So for fall quarter, once your enrollment time begins, you'll be enrolling in all the classes um, that you plan to take as long as they're available for you, uh, meaning that there's seats available. You'll go ahead and sign up for those classes. Uh, but for winter quarter and moving on through your time here at UC San Diego, it changes to a two-pass enrollment system. Um, and what that does is it allows students to, it, it allows for students to strategically plan their courses while they're here at UC San Diego. So um, the first pass does limit you to 11.5 units. So typically that's two classes for students during the first pass. The second pass comes on and then uh, about a week or two, or actually a couple of weeks later, and then you'll sign up for um, the rest of your classes up to 19.5 units, which is another, for most students, it's another two classes. And then on the first day of classes of the quarter, it goes up to 22 units. So for students who may be wanting to take five classes during a specific quarter, on the first day of classes, you'll be able to sign up for that fifth class. Um, and again, I know that this sounds, like you know, for, for some students, it sounds very restrictive and why are you, you know, doing this? Um, so the university wants to allow all of our students an equal opportunity to sign up for the classes that they need. In the past, students used to sign up for all classes all at once and enrollment times are given after fall quarter. So not for fall, but for winter quarter and moving forward, enrollment times are determined based off of your standing. So if, you know, depending on like whether you're senior, a, a junior, sophomore, uh, first year. Um, this is determined based off of units. And so students come at different levels of units. Um, and so students with a lot of units used to take up a lot of the seats for courses, oftentimes courses that maybe they didn't need, they were just class shopping. So instead of allowing students to sort of class shop and sign up for four classes all at once and take a seat from a student who actually needed it, their students are being forced to kind of, to, to think about what classes you actually need, sign up for those first, and then sort of strategically plan the rest of your courses. So it's again, to allow all of our students an equal opportunity uh, as much as possible. I um, mean, we know there's always issues with that, but to kind of allow you to sign up for classes as you need. So as for questions about the VAC and when the counselors will answer questions, uh, we answer the questions through the VAC usually within one to two business days and business days do not include weekends or holidays. 
So over the weekends, we, you can sub potentially submit questions. Um, actually, Mono, could you please correct me if I'm wrong there? Can students um, ask questions during the weekend or do we close those? The, no, they, the uh, virtual advising system is always open. Um, we just won't get to your questions. We get to your questions within 24 to 48 hours. And that's again, we're not working the weekends. So if you ask over the weekend, you probably won't hear from us until sometime Monday morning or Monday afternoon. And that extends to holidays as well. So we will not answer questions on holidays, but the next business day after them. Okay. So the next question is, um, we talked today about, um, we talked about uh, G sort of the transfer um, sort of some of the different transfer agreements uh, including I get see and partial I get see so the question is if we have not completed I get see or partial I get see um, is it okay if we finish our remaining lower division G standard GEs at the community college during our time at UCSD so um, you know that's an excellent question uh, the what I would tell you is we want you to to think about uh, sort of where you're, so you're coming to UC San Diego to get your degree from UCSD. Um, and so the idea is that you're completing most of your coursework here at UC San Diego. Um, so the answer is, it's, it's for the most part is no, you can if you have like a small amount of coursework to actually have to complete. But if we look at um, trying to pull up here, the, the um, our, so I'm looking for, to kind of help me explain the answer to this. So I'm going to our website, so our Warren website, warren.ucc.edu, um, under general education requirements, you scroll to the bottom and here's where we have the information for our transfers. So with uh, those without the, I get to your our, our reciprocity or anything, no transfer agreement, um, again, you're expected to complete sort of all of these requirements. Warren Writing 100 has to be done at UC San Diego. The Ethics and Society both have to be done at UC San Diego. Formal skills are two courses that can be done at the community college. So if you're a student who didn't necessarily take a formal skills course, you can go back to the community college and technically do that there. And then depending on whether or not you have two programs of concentration or area studies, area studies are typically for our engineering students. Everybody else does programs of concentration. Three courses, so for programs of concentration, three courses uh, must be upper division. So all three of those will need to be done at UC San Diego. Um, the other three, sometimes you come in with credits that may fulfill some of those, um, or I guess technically at that point, you could go back to the community college and try to complete that course. There is um, area studies, it's one lower division and two upper divisions, so two upper division courses. Um, so both of those would need to be done at UC San Diego. So you, the answer is basically, it depends on what you're missing, um, what you came in with. Um, if there is lower division coursework that you could technically still fulfill, at the community college level, then yeah, technically you may be able to go back and complete the coursework and transfer it over even after you've already started at UCSD. Um, but most of your GEs uh, that are upper division, your major upper division coursework, all of that will need to be done at UC San Diego. So there's gonna be a very limited amount of courses that you actually can go back to the community college and complete. Um, sorry, we're kind of going through here and looking through your questions. Um, let's see what's going on here. All right, and then um, I do see some stuff is coming in sort of through the chat. If you're able to um, list some of that as well in the Q&A, that'll make it a little bit easier on us. Um, if you're absolutely having issues with the Q&A, that's okay. Go ahead and continue to submit those through the chat. Um, we'll try and get through some of the Q&A stuff first, and then we'll kind of go through the chat as well. Um, so I'll answer the next one again here in terms of uh, what is the deadline to contact Warren advising about the transfer GE exception petition? Another great question. So although there isn't an exact date, so there isn't an exact deadline, the longer you wait, um, the, the more complicated it can be for you to, to ask to, to kind of figure out what you're missing, right? Um, so if you feel like you could benefit from a transfer GE exception, because again, with a transfer GE exception petition, your requirements would go down significantly if you get it um, approved, then, and again, these, and I'd like to have to emphasize that again, this is just for our um, uh, students who attended schools in California, um, but it would be the Warren Writing uh, 100 and the two upper division on contiguous. So you might be narrowing down the amount of coursework we actually have to complete um, by a lot. So 
if you wait until your second year and you know you end up taking uh, the other issue that we have is sometimes students follow you know you follow the degree audit that's what we're asking you to do but if you don't check in with us about the GE exception petition early on you may end up taking things like the ethics and society courses that you may not need if you meet the transfer GE exception uh, qualifications so the sooner the better that way we can clear up your degree audit um, it'll look nicer it'll make it easier for you and you can really focus on the coursework that you actually need to complete um, if you have more questions around that just go ahead and send, send us a message through the virtual advising center um, and we can follow up with you a little bit more with what the other details would be so we have a question here about the ethics and society two courses philosophy poli sci 27 and 28 uh, these courses must be taken at UCSD um, and they would be taken after you finish the, the Warren writing requirement, um, but that's only if you are, have not already fulfilled your IGETC. Um, so those would be for students who didn't fulfill the IGETC or a transfer uh, program. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. The next question I see on here is, um, let's see, how do we gain access to other UCSD transfer course to, for transfer students? I'm not quite understanding that question. Um, so for whoever submitted that question, just go ahead and if you can clarify that a little bit for us and we'll try and get to that uh, live if we can. Um, let's see. So how do we develop personalized education plans on, on Triton Link? Um, so we don't have like a, a tool on Triton Link that's live yet in terms of how to come up with like a, a two-year plan or like a long-term plan for you. So the strategy around that is to, uh, we always, as transfer students, for most of you, the bulk of your coursework is gonna be major related. So we always want you to be, make sure that you're, if you're in com not communication with Warren, although you need to be in communication with us as well because of your GEs, that you're at least in communication with your major department. Um, and that'll help you, they can help you create those two-year plans, those long-term plans for you to kind of help you keep on track. We always suggest that you start with them, plan out the classes for, for them through there, and then you then would meet with us, and then we would help you plan out the rest of your GE requirements that you may be missing, as well as those university requirements. Um, as you remember, remember from, the, from the presentation, again, right, we covered a couple of uh, different university requirements. And so, you know, the most common one that students have to do at UC San Diego is the DEI. So we make sure, we also help make sure that you um, have fulfilled that requirement or that you are planning to take a class to fulfill that requirement as well. Um, but the answer to that question is you basically work with a major department first. Um, you meet with them, you set up an appointment, and then you meet with us. You can also set up an appointment with us, and then we can go ahead and help you uh, plan out your, your time here at UC San Diego. Um, we can start doing that for you in the middle of fall quarter. Um, we, the first couple of weeks, we get really busy with a lot of walk-ins, and so walk-ins are sort of kept to a lot of those kind of quick questions, sort of quick reviews of our audits, GE requirements, um, questions that you may have um, sort of in general, and then we can then uh, work with you through appointments um, later on in the quarter to then kind of have more of that concentrated time with you, very specific time to really look at your records, uh, and plan out your time here um, so that you feel like you're, you know what you're doing um, in your time here and that you feel like you're ready to graduate once it's all said and done. So just to add a little bit onto the academic appointments, um, I want to point you towards where you can find that information on how to schedule an appointment for fall 2020, which as Amato mentioned will happen, will start to happen within the first few weeks of fall. So if you go to academic advising on our UCSD uh, WARN website, and you scroll down, there'll be a little section over here for schedule a zoom appointment and we will add the information there on how to schedule appointment as fall comes closer perfect um let's see so someone said that their course petition is still pending um so their pre-authorization request is denied 
Um, what can they do to add that class during the schedule or moment time next week? Uh, if it was uh, with the department, again, you'll need to reach out to the department. And the cool thing that you all have as transfer students is that, again, you do have access to the department through the virtual advising center as well. So you can direct your question through the to a department or to us. Um, depending on what the requirement that is that you're asking to be pre-authorized for, that's the department you want to go ahead and contact. Um, likely the petition uh, for a course may have been with that same department. Um, and so you want to check in with that for, with those folks first. Um, if it wasn't the same department, um, let's say, I don't know, it's like a, a math course that's, you know, you're petitioning for and it's a prerequisite for uh, a uh, uh, an engineering course, a physics course, something like that, then you'll first need to check in with the department that you petitioned with, um, follow up with them either via email, um, via the virtual advising center. And then once you hear from them, then uh, you may have to submit an easy request again. You will not be able to sign up for the class um, until you've either had that easy request uh, approved or the pre-authorization um, through the petition has gone through. So a student did ask a question of who they can contact to make sure that their transfer program is processed on their degree audit. So this is something that you can ask us about. Um, and if you're noticing that there are any inconsistencies, um, you can do, I believe as Amato had already mentioned previously, a transfer G exception petition, um, where you would send us your transcripts and we would update your audit accordingly. Um, so how can you check if uh, you are a Getsy certified um, or if you're if it's been received. Um, so to check if you're a Getsy certified first it starts with the community college. So you check in with them and then uh, they'll verify for you whether or not you met the um, qualifications to be either full I Getsy or partial I Getsy. Um, partial again is your short one or two courses from uh, completing the set of requirements. This is for California community colleges. And um, if the community college certifies that you're either one of those, then you'll have them submit a certification to UC San Diego um, admissions. Um, our admissions office will then post it. It takes them at least six to eight weeks to update that information on your academic history, um, how to access that. Uh, so you'll notice that so far we've referred to our Warren website for a lot of our answers, but as well to Triton Link for some of our answers. Triton Link is another tool that you're going to be using quite frequently. Um, and there's a lot of cool tools here that you'll need to be familiarized with. So where can you check to see if it's already been posted? Um, if you don't see it on your degree audit, you would go to Triton Link, then you go to Triton Link Tools, and you go to your academic history under grades and transcripts and tools. There you'll see the coursework, whether or not UCC, UCSD admissions has already posted your um, transfer coursework uh, to your records. That's, you'll see them listed on there. It'll show you if it's equivalent to UCSD class. And then it'll also show you if a certification was received and posted, it'll show that information on there. If it says certified, then you're good to go. You'll know you have to take the one writing 100 and the two non-contiguous courses. Um, if it says partial, then we'll need to code in what those partial are. So you'll just need to reach out to us and let us know. If it doesn't show that, but you're pretty sure you're certified, send us a message through the VAC. We can check to see if it was received and, when to, and whether or not you might be okay, um, or if you need to send one in and what your next steps are. Right, and it's 941 and I know we still have a couple questions. So again, we'll try and get to it through as many as we can. Um, I may stay another minute or two over the time, given that we did start a, a minute or so late, but um, uh, we'll try and get through as many of your questions as we can. Uh, so let's see here. Um, so someone noticed that a course is not marked off as green on their audit. Um, if you know you took that course, if you know it got transferred over, it got posted, you got credit for it, uh, check in with the department um, or with the the one who's in charge of handling that section so again if it's a major section a part of um, your degree audit check in with the major department if it's a ge section um, check in with us and we can take a look as to why maybe the course is not being picked up um, so someone followed up can we finish our standard ge's at a community college so again i answered that a little bit earlier but just to reiterate um, if there are lower division courses you must take um, at the, that you can take, then you may be able to do some of those at the community college, um, especially if they're California. If they're out of state community colleges, um, you will need to petition those courses. Um, so just check in with us before you make that decision, just to make sure it is a good um, strategy to take them at the community college. 
but if you are missing upper division coursework um, or Warren Writing or again Warren Writing 100, which needs to be done at UC San Diego, if you're missing ethics and, ethics and society, those all need to be done at UCSD. Um, so, what are overlap courses? Overlap courses are uh, classes that you can use for multiple requirements. Um, so there aren't a lot of opportunities to overlap. Um, you know, you can overlap lower division coursework between GEs and uh, major coursework if they apply. Um, typically that's, uh, that's most common with our uh, formal skills uh, requirement over here. Um, because students came in with credit for one of these courses. Uh, but uh, upper division coursework cannot be overlapped between major and um, the uh, GE requirements. Um, we do have, let's see if I can find it on here. I know we have somewhere on our website like a, a list of, of um, things that can or cannot overlap um, between uh, requirements. Um, I'll try and get through some of the questions, but just if you have questions and we want to make sure again whether or not it can overlap, you can check our website or just contact us. Um, it's much easier when we look at your records and we can give you a more specific answer um, in regards to that. Uh, so I saw there is, uh, if you fill out a pre-authorization form request, how quickly would that be approved? It depends on the, on the departments. Um, you likely won't receive an answer the same day. So um, you have to give it at least, I would say at least two business days before a department uh, look, looks at it. Most of our offices though, um, we tell our students that petitions um, can take anywhere between five to seven business days for us to review. Um, so it's not, uh, we are, we try to go through them as quickly as we can. Um, we understand like students need to enroll, so we do keep that in mind. Um, but this is definitely like one of our busiest times of the year where we are working with all of our incoming students. And um, so, but each department functions differently. The colleges, you can see we have, um, if you go to our, like our staffing um, and you can see who our staff is, like we have quite a few staff members. So we have a little bit more bandwidth for being able to answer your questions. If you are directing easy requests, enrollment authorization system requests um, for pre-authorizations to the departments, some departments only have one or two staff members. So it'll take them a little bit longer to kind of get through those requests. So the safe bet is for now, I would say five to seven business days, but they may get to it a little bit sooner than that. Um, so how do we gain access to the, the transfer um, uh, year experience uh, course? Um, the, so for any information on uh, on you would go to fye.ucsd.edu and um, there's more information on the transfer year experience uh, course over here uh, on this page but uh, there you would contact uh, their their office um, for back over here so there's a video on like how to um, experience this stuff but also um, you can email them at fye.ucsd.edu and they can give a little bit more information on how to uh, enroll for that, um, for that course. Um, and then we have a couple, let's see, three more in the Q&A, so I'll try and get through these as quickly as I can again. Um, if we are a class short from partial, can we finish that class and get the certification from community college while at UCSD? Um, it depends on, so if the community college want, is okay writing you a partial certification, um, then you can certainly submit it. Um, the idea though is that you um, have completed these requirements prior to transferring to UCSD. So if you're three courses short of a partial that gets you or more, um, the likelihood is you're gonna have to finish the transfer, um, uh, transfer requirements for uh, the general requirements for our transfer students um, to, to complete your degree here. Um, so, but you can certainly try and see if they're willing to um, give you a partial certification. If they're able to, you can then submit that certification to the admissions office. And then, um, and then once it's posted, you can let us know and we can help update that degree audit for you. So do we need to enroll in our courses for the fall before we can submit our financial aid selection? Um, I, not sure. You have to add, you have to ask the financial aid office um, how to access them. FAS.ucsd.edu. 
um, is the website for our financial aid uh, office. Um, if you scroll to the bottom, there is more information on how to access them. Um, they also have virtual counseling and then their uh, hours as well as contact information. So you can definitely reach out to them and see what the financial aid requirements are. Um, but you definitely want to make sure you sign up for classes when your enrollment time begins uh, so that you are in classes while you wait to find out um, what's going on with the financial aid stuff as well. And then the last question here is how do um, you choose an elective as a as for your major um, a student has received an associate's degree from the community college and so what would be the routine for for your specific major um, so in this example they were given uh, economics as their as their major um, so please contact the, the major department um, you can definitely look up the department uh, in this case you could look at economics.ucsd.edu and then you can look up their undergraduate program, their major requirements, and then depending on which major you are, they will give you a more specifics on what those um, electives are. So you can use like the checklist here, and you can see here it gives you like a list of options that you can choose from. Uh, but you can con the best the best answer to this to this question is uh, check in with the department. Um, they'll give you a more specific sort of list of courses that you can uh, go to um, and choose from. Um, I know that our students oftentimes get an associate degree um, and sometimes some of that coursework can be applied. It's, it's just a matter of how coursework transfers over. Um, but again, community college coursework only counts as lower division at UCSD. So all these upper division courses, likely you'll have to meet all of those. None of the community college coursework will satisfy um, those upper division courses. So plan to take all of your upper division coursework at UCSD. Um, all right, so that's all of our questions to the Q&A system. I know we didn't get through um, all those questions or we tried our best to get through as many of the questions as we could. Um, if we didn't get to your answer to your, um, an answer to your question, please, please, please reach out to us through the Virtual Advising Center. We've said this uh, on multiple occasions, but I'll say it one more time, vac.ucsd.edu um, on the Ask a Question tab. Um, send us your question. Um, we have advisors going through this every day and we're getting through them as soon as, as we can, with the exception of our weekend. So if you're getting a question to us today, um, by this afternoon, um, we'll try our best to get back to you, um, like I said, by the end of, of today at the afternoon. Um, but other than that, again, thank you for joining us. Um, we uh, hope that you found this uh, helpful. And um, I don't know if Chelsea has anything else to say, but. No, nothing other than that. Please do, as Amato has said, and I have said as well, please send us your questions to the back. Thank you very much for coming to our webinar um, and have a good day.